You know, I don't know what Google's going to do in terms of battery life. Like, it, they could optimize it because it's a full stack thing. But like you said, like, the Exynos version of these Galaxy S phones, Galaxy Note phones, are often worse. Yeah. So it's possible that we see a rocky a rocky start. I think Apple had a big leg up because x86 is such an old architecture, whereas Google is competing directly with Qualcomm because they're both using ARM parts. Yeah. I think the reason I'm so optimistic is because when you look at the iPhone, mm. Apple makes iOS yeah. and Apple codes and makes that silicon. Um, Google makes Android. Yeah. And so when they are coding and making Android and optimizing, they have truly the full stack. Like all the others obviously are making Android phones, but they don't yeah. make Android. They'll take it and they'll optimize it for themselves. Yeah. But that's like the one extra bit where we never really look at the milliamp hour size of an iPhone battery mm -hmm. because it doesn't really match up versus the expected battery performance because they don't have the same level of vertical integration as Apple. So now Google with Pixel will finally have that full stack. That's why I hope, I'm crossing my fingers for audio <laughs> listeners, I hope that they can take advantage of that and deliver an awesome battery yeah. life despite you know not having the biggest batteries in the world. I think they're definitely getting closer to what Apple can offer. They are mm. constrained under a similar constraint that Windows is constrained by when it comes to Windows versus Mac. Whereas Windows has to have support for all these older versions, it has to support other phones. And yes, Google can optimize Android for the Pixel, but it still has to work on other phones, right? right. Whereas Apple on the Mac and on the iPhone can literally update to a new OS and say, hey, developers, if you want to be on the new OS, you have to change your code base. Wow. Whereas Windows can't do that. Android can't do that. Android's mostly coded in Java. Mm -hmm. Java's old. Now, now, Apple does everything in new and swift, and it's great, right? It's fast. It's new. It's it's lean. Yeah. So that's, that's the constraint that Google's under. They said they've been working on Tensor for four years. I think they've been working on it. They've at least been conceptualizing it since they decided to launch the Pixel program. I believe that. We want to talk about a, a couple other quick things with Pixel 6 because I still have uh, future hope. <laughs> I have, I'm optimistic. Uh, <laughs> the one hear. thing I wanted to talk about was software updates. So yeah. I mentioned this in the video, and this came from a lot of the ideas you were giving me. So when an Android phone manufacturer promises three years of software updates, mm -hmm. or a lot of times they'll say like three generations or whatever. Let's say three years. Yeah. Um, they are depending on like a couple different variables to be able to deliver those three years. Yeah. They obviously are going to keep getting updates from Android and they're going to keep coding and, and sending resources to changing that and making sure it works with their new device. Mm -hmm. And three years later, they stop putting in the effort and it just has that version forever. Mm -hmm. Um, with Pixel and Tensor and Google making Android, they are not just able to deliver possibly longer, but it feels like they're incentivized oh, absolutely. to do so. Yeah. Can you break that down? Yeah. So when you have a phone, when you buy a phone from, say, uh, I was going to say LG, but RIP. Rip. Uh, <laughs> let's say LG, because I think they only ever promised like two years of software updates. Okay. Uh, basically, that's cons the software updates are constrained by the chip maker, Qualcomm. Cause they, I didn't know this. Yeah. Yeah. So they have to basically support that Android version on that phone for a certain number of time. Now, Qualcomm, the max amount of time they usually support, this can be changed depending on their relationship with an ODM. But the max amount of time that they usually support Android updates for is about three years per device. And if you'll notice, the companies that make a big deal about like supporting your phone for longer, uh, Samsung, for example, offers four years of security updates. So there's three years of Android versions, yeah. four years of security updates. Sure. The reason they don't push more than three years of Android updates on their Exynos chips is because they want to have feature parity with all their phones. So they don't want there to be like confusion, right? There's been that issue before where like, Samsung could have done something in the S20, with, but only on the Exynos version, but they don't because Qualcomm didn't offer it. Ah, right. So they yes. need to have feature parity. Samsung, you've avoided the confusion. You're not confusing at all now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with Google, now they can just be like, oh, well, we're going to support Android for as long as we can. And that is beneficial to them because they make way more fun. They make way more money on you after they sell you the phone based on like things like Google Assistant, things like search, like they make all their money through 
ad services, basically. Yeah. And this is a huge reason why Apple has really opened up their ecosystem of monthly payment services like Apple Fitness Plus, Apple News Plus, Apple TV Plus. Yeah. Because they've this, saturated the market of iPhones like in the US. This is, it was so, it was so like obvious when I, they, they're basically coming it from the opposite direction. Like, okay, Google has wanted to just give, get a phone in your hand so they can make money from you over and over because they sell ads, right? Um, Apple has made a lot of money from selling phones, but then a, a while ago they didn't really make that much money on services. They'd get you the phone. They don't have that much data. They're not selling ads. They're not really making as much money as they could. Obviously the app store is huge, but when they started making all these services, they generated tons and tons of revenue per customer, mm. per device. Mm -hmm. Everybody out there with an iPhone who pays 10 bucks a month for Apple Music, who pays for iCloud storage, who pays for Apple News and Apple TV is just giving Apple more and more money. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a new development for Apple. Whereas with Google, they want to have the device in your in your hands as long as possible now because yeah. they've already been making lots yeah. of money on the devices. That's when, where they've been making their money the entire time. When they yeah. first sold the Nexus Seven tablet, mm -hmm. they lost money on that hardware for every unit sold. I remember that because they were trying to get people to make Google accounts. That was mm -hmm. literally the reason they sold that tablet in the first place. Yeah. So they've been doing that forever. Apple is now like, oh. We made tons of money on hardware, but now we need to start really ramping up our ecosystem lock-in through monthly subscriptions. Apple used to make a ton of money on hardware. They still obviously do. When you see their iPhone sales, it's still a lot of their revenue. Um, but they're starting to realize like that iPhone sales are going down every year. People are replacing them less often. And it seems a little bit counterintuitive, right? Because you would say, if they're replacing them less often, then you should support it for less time. But they're realizing they're making more money off the residual services that come with your iPhone, like Apple Music Plus, or Apple Music, Apple TV Plus, yeah, Apple Fitness Plus. All the pluses. Google's been doing that forever. So now it's really in Google's best interest for you to have that phone for as long as possible because on Google's own phone, you're going to have Gmail be the stock um, email app. You're going to have Chrome be the stock internet app. They make the most money if you use their services, whereas other Android phones, you know, it's becoming more common for other Android phones to use Google services as the primary dedicated app, but the EU will actually fine Google for making their app the default app. It's anti-competitive behavior. Because it's anti-competitive and they'll lose money. So yeah. the more people that are on Pixels where they can say, this is our product, we're allowed to make all the Google services, the default apps, yep. the longer you're on that, the longer you stay on a Pixel and don't go to a Huawei phone or a Samsung phone where yeah. you might be using Samsung internet, the more money they're going to make. Yeah, this reminds me of a question I asked Satya Nadella, but it kind of would apply to Google as well. Google makes Android, and it's open source, and anybody can use Android, and anyone can make a competitive Android phone, but Google has the biggest advantage, theoretically, to make the best Android phone. Yeah. And I'm so curious how that's going to pan out now that it seems like they're really they're really going to spend yeah. and they're really going to try and they're going to actually try to punt. If they want market share, they can be competitive yeah. and they can actually push this phone. So I'm curious about that. One more thing. But we do have one more thing. Pixel's all about camera. Yeah. And I noticed that these phones all have new sensors, like mm. bigger sensors there. I think they literally said in the blog post that these cameras are so big now that they don't fit in a normal camera bump. Yeah. <laughs> Why we have a camera bar. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I wonder if this is, uh, this is just pure speculation, mm -hmm. but if this is going to take the leap that we were finally hoping for where, yeah. you know, Pixel 2 was like an incredible smartphone camera and maybe the photos were a little blue, but they eventually improved that and they had better glass in air quotes because as we lenses. learned, it's plastic lenses yeah. and smartphones. But yeah. like they've had a really good camera for a while that didn't make huge leaps and they're making a big hardware leap here. Mm. Do you... At the risk of hyping it too much, do you think that this is a big leap? Or yeah, I mean, you know, what's really funny is that uh, the Pixel Two actually had a worse sensor than the Pixel One. Like, if you if you look at that, wow, a worse camera. Right. It had like a higher aperture, so it let in less light, and it was just it was very slightly worse. Mm -hmm. I think it was probably just a cheaper part, and because the Pixel Two is like a, they started using those uh, OLED screens from LG. Um, it was more expensive to use the overall phone. Anyway, regardless of that. It's really funny watching the curve of the last maybe like four years when the reviews come out and the Pixel reviews come out and everyone says, camera, still the best next year. Camera, still the best but barely. Camera, 
Uh, one of the best. Feel like again. it's one of the best again. And then iPhone 11 Pro come out came out, and everyone's like, I think Apple's starting to make a better camera than Google. I gave it my camera of the year in the smartphone awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, the Pixel has always been, or the camera, sorry, has been one of the reasons why I love the Pixel so much. Yeah, and it's one of the best cameras in any Android phone, not just as far as quality, but it's always been really fast. Yeah, with instant shutter and all these new ML things to like re- remove blur, and it just seems like it's going to be a great camera again. Uh, but I wonder, like, you know, we have huge, huge sensors in some <laughs> of our smartphone cameras, and they really don't do all that much more with it. Right. Like, if you'd compared, let's say, a Pixel 5 shot with that small sensor with, like, the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra with this gigantic, like, almost one-inch sensor, mm-hmm. and you take the same shot on each, it's like, eh, sometimes I just prefer the Pixel photo. Like, it's, yeah. it's very detailed. It doesn't have the big sensor look, but, like... Pixel moving to a huge sensor now has me really curious. You bring up that big sensor look, and I think people are starting to notice that more over time. Because a bigger sensor look will make things look more lifelike. Whereas, like, even if a Pixel's tuning and sharpening from the older Pixels look better, you start to zoom in at all, and it just completely falls apart. True. You look at things like grass, and it's over-sharpened. If you actually look at any details of yeah. Pixel shots, it... None of the individual details are good. The whole shot is good. Right. That's a good point. A lot of times if you'd put a side-by-side shot of the Pixel versus the Mi 11 Ultra or whatever other big sensor phone you want to give, even a Samsung, like, yeah, you're right. The zoomed out shot, I picked the Pixel nine times out of ten. Yeah. The second you want to zoom in on pinching in some detail, you're yeah. going to get a sharper image from the other. Yeah. So I'm curious. I've heard rumors. I don't know if this is – I don't think it's confirmed at all, but of like a 50-megapixel primary sensor, I'm like – Whoa. I think the reason I'm most excited is because there are like a multiplicative of reasons why this could be amazing, right? You're letting in way more light. Right. And Google was already using ML to add in like artificial pixels, right? They were filling in space that wasn't there using machine learning. Mm -hmm. So not only do you get the combination of natural physics benefiting you, but you get natural physics plus Tensor, Uh which is like, we're going to use a lot of this chip for ML. So you have like physics plus insane machine learning capabilities. Fake physics and real physics are both on your side. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, the the interesting thing is like, if they had used the A88, they actually could have made the camera better because Mm -hmm. Qualcomm, to Qualcomm's credit, they did add like multi-frame video, Mm -hmm. like HDR video, which is literally one frame. They're actually taking three frames, one of which has a short exposure, one that has a medium exposure, and one that has a long exposure. So even if it's 1 30th of a second, uh, it's actually doing like a 1 90th, a 1 1 70th. Yeah, they're doing a lot. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, But I am really, really excited for both video and photo capabilities of these phones. Yeah. I think they're going to be very awesome. I think Night Sight from a massive sensor with Tensor is yeah. going to be sick. It's going to be insane. It's going to be sick. Yeah. Oh, look, you made it to the end of the clip. Congrats. You didn't make it to the end of smartphone season, though. That's still, like, coming up soon, so you're probably going to want to hit a couple buttons. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you like the video. There's also down there, there's, like, a little bell button. You're going to want to ring ding that, ring that ding bell. Ding it up. And we'll see you guys in the next one. You, I get ready for the piece this uh, time and you don't do it.